Hello and welcome to the channel that teaches you things your parents and teachers are too afraid to. The Helios blog. Today, Michaela Peterson talks about what women want. Now class, I want you to turn your textbooks to page 42. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. And he actually did make a good point is that like with relationships, people like online, we often talk a lot about like things like money and personality, like which obviously matter. But he also made the good the good point that a lot of a relationship is just like, are you able to live comfortably with someone and spend time with them? And I think that's that's a really good point, um, especially online, like the Red Bull community, they can get really neurotic about like this statistic means that this many women will be interested or whatever it is but it's like <sighs> classic don't care about facts data and statistics guys it's all about feelings it's all about conversations it's all about communication disaster like ultimately with a relationship you're going to be living with this person you're going to be like sharing a life together you're going to need to be able to be around and enjoy each other's company. So I think for which I, the people who are like not online perpetually, like I am, they're going to be listening to that and be like, how is that advice? Like, obviously you should like the person you're dating, but I, I think there are a lot of people online who need to be reminded actually that you should just like your spouse because like people are more than just their body count or their bank account or how many kids. So what she's saying is, don't worry about their bank account. Don't worry about a girl's end count. Don't worry about these things. Just, can you, can you spend time in the same room together? Ridiculous. Like, wh what is this nonsense, guys? Like, it's absolutely absurd. Okay, anyway. Kids they want to have. So, like, don't get too neurotic when you're dating, I guess. Yeah. I like that. Do you enjoy each other's company? That's a that's yeah. a huge one though, because I feel like there are some people that do enjoy each other's company, but then one of the people only wants to hang out a little bit. It's like, oh, I have a great time of hanging out with you, but like for like a couple of hours a day, maybe. Yeah, so what that means is in the relationship, the guy is looking for friends with benefits, the girl is looking for a relationship. Michaela, don't tell on yourself like that. Uh -huh. And then how's that going to translate over to like marriage? It's not. Well, that's, <laughs> it's also interesting because I, I know a, a girl who is, she's like an introvert and she's with an extrovert. And I'm not saying that those relationships can't work, but I know that for her, at least it actually is hard because sometimes like for her birthday, she just literally wanted to be able to like go to a hotel and like have alone time, um, which is like Liam and I are both introverts. So it's like, we live together, but we're not always together. Plus, plus we also work together. So, uh, you know, we are very happy some nights to just be like, okay, we're just going to chill out like separately at home. Disaster. <laughs> we're just going to go sleep in separate beds. You know, I, I, I'm bored of you. This is why there needs to be some separation. Introvert, extrovert pairs are really good because there is some separation right something to miss that's why you don't work together with your girl that's why you don't do all your activities together right so that there is some separation so that there's something to miss so that there's something to come back to that's the point um and i feel like if you're not on the same page with that like one of you is n more extroverted and they want more attention the other one wants to be left alone like that also could cause some friction actually i know a couple like that too where the guy is more introverted and he actually says that like he's drained being with his girlfriend he feels like he needs to almost take vacations after his vacations because she'll have them booked like from like dawn till dusk with different social engagements and it's tiring for him like he's exhausted yeah that's because the girl runs the relationship she owns the frame and when she owns the frame, then how can you possibly have an enjoyable relationship? You can't. So, like, it's, it's nuts, guys. Obviously. That's insane. <laughs> like, 
exhausted by the end of it. Yeah. I, I think figuring out your personality or at least knowing what you're like and then discussing that frankly with the other person is very important. Yes. I, uh, I knew that if I ended up with somebody who was introverted, I'm so extroverted. Like going to coffee shops to be able to work around people, even just so I could see people. I don't even really like people, but I really don't like being alone. So Michaela, you're a disaster. Walking nightmare. Who would marry this? Okay, anyway. Like, I don't really like people, but I don't want to be alone. So basically, no matter what, she's unhappy. Understood. So, right, and if, if you're with an introvert, that's going to be, that's going to be lonely. You're going to feel like yeah. you're cooped up. You want to get out there, but you're almost going to feel like the other person is, you know, if they're not on the same page or willing to let you go out and do your own thing, almost like holding you back or trying to, I guess, like keep you cooped up. So it's hard on both people for sure. If you're not on the same page. Yeah. And if you're an introvert, you're going to feel like you're drowning all the time. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yeah. I think neuroticism too is a huge one that plays a role. Like I think if one person is an anxious person and is stressed out, they can be with someone who's stable. But I think having two anxious people together is also like not a great idea for long. Well, of course, logically, that's why the, the guy needs to be stable and the girl can be flitting around. That's the whole point. <laughs> it's like these people, they're talking about these theoretical things like like they've never ever like man like they've never lived real life before it's like ooh like do you think that man okay anyway in terms yes. of success yeah yeah i think yeah. other like other personality traits might work but neuroticism and extroversion conscientiousness though as well yeah, definitely. I mean, I know, like, and even like, we're my husband and I we're pretty well matched on most things. But even like with with uh, conscientiousness, so I'm messier than he is, and I feel like unless we were willing to be like, okay, I'm gonna keep things tidier than I. I understand. She uh she married a beta male. Got it. It's obvious. I would personally like and he's gonna have to deal with things not being as tidy as he would like that's also a, a like a point of where that could very easily lead to contention and it's funny so i like you have you ever been on like r slash relationships or r slash like am i the asshole like there are these posts where people will blow up at each other over like a trivial thing and everyone in the comments is like it's not actually about this thing. You guys have deeper issues and this just happened to be the straw that broke the camel's back. And I feel like if you're not matched on things like introversion versus extroversion, conscientiousness, or even neuroticism, like those kind of underlying tensions kind of set the stage for maybe one day something's gonna happen and you're both gonna act very uncharitably toward each other, but it's not actually about like that one incident. It's about the resentment or the frustration that's been building up kind of in the background underneath it all. Yeah, that's perfect. This is why it's my opinion that um, you should uh, just be disagreeable. Like, if you're disagreeable, then basically you just say what you dislike. And when you say what you dislike then you, you basically get what you want. Because when you say what you dislike, um, arguments don't build over time. You have the instant argument, and so you don't have the long-term resentment argument. The arguments happen either way. I also think one mistake people can make when they're dating is, uh, be, okay, this is a mistake that I've made, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Solipsism. But is being interested in someone who's extroverted and isn't conscientious. Like, so they're very disorganized, but they're so much fun. And being <laughs> like, oh, this could work. Like the extroversion is really sharp. She's telling on herself. This is the, these are the alpha males that she's uh, slept with, but actually she marries a beta afterwards. Going up here. And then that just doesn't work out long-term because all you're seeing is somebody who's extroverted and exciting and maybe ambitious. But the background, the depth isn't there. Is she describing That's something Tate? Like, I think women who are attracted to extroverts need to be aware of. Yeah, and I think there's also I don't know. I think she's she was describing Andrew Tate there. 
if men go for it as much, but I could see there are definitely a lot of like online female figures who are maybe like Instagram influencers who might be a similar story. But if a guy actually wants something deeper, that may not be the right person to to search for that with. Yeah, definitely. Okay, what about values men should look for in women? Um, I would say like, again, loyalty is super important. Yep, um, and for women, and it's funny because like right now there's like, there's a lot of women are getting in the red pill community, especially, which is I, it's not the same as the conservative movement at all. But, you know, because both communities are critical of feminism and like things like hookup culture, I feel like we kind of ad- exist like adjacent to each other. Um, so women are getting a really bad rap in the red pill community as just like terrible nowadays. And I don't think that's true. There are a lot of good women out there. Like I'm friends with many, many great women. Um values that I think it's important or attributes that I think is important for a woman to have absolutely like loyalty and commitment to family. Um, and I yep, feel like sure. there's a lot of selfishness that are, that is being pushed onto women. Not that women are innately more selfish than men. It's just that I feel like society almost tries to tell a lot of young women that it's a good thing for them to be more self-interested right. as a form of empowerment, um, which is not something men to the same degree are being told. So it's something that has, I think, blossomed more in women. And I think I would be very wary of that if, if you're a man, just because, like, I mean, you, you might think it's just kind of annoying or quirk, but if you're trying to build a life- If a girl is self-interested, she's not interested in you. <laughs> She needs to be interested in you if you if you want an actual successful, stable relationship. She needs to see you as, you know, more. She needs to see you as, uh, like, big and important in her life and not as nothing, right? Obviously. Life with someone and they're always looking out mostly for themselves instead of like you guys as a couple or even your kids i think it's gonna you're gonna find that you don't have as much of, of a partner as you probably are going to need throughout your life indeed yeah that's tricky too because even in the kind of what, what would the category of people be like self-help self-betterment community i don't know what that community is uh but it can be conservative as well you're told optimize yourself i think men are actually told this more is like build up yourself because you're number one and then everything else will kind of fall into place and i do think it kind of changes when you get into a relationship where you can't just be number one at least not all the time or it doesn't work out like you have to be aiming towards the same thing and i feel like Men are kind of told, like, build yourself up a lot, which is good. You should build yourself up. But it's like women are told, do what makes you happy a lot. I hear that a lot. That's a lie. Yeah, exactly. Do what makes you happy is some bullshit. Because happiness is fleeting. You need to have bigger, stronger, more relevant goals than that, obviously, right? And anyone with half a brain can tell you that, but... A lot of people, it seems to be lost on them, right? Like, this this, this concept. Or, like, follow your heart and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think that's really good advice. Like, no. I mean, it's not always the worst advice, but I don't think those are words to live by because I feel like there are a lot of things that might be fleetingly a good idea or that might feel good at the time or make you happy at the time, but that are ultimately bad decisions in the long term and like just on social media i see the way a lot of young women are behaving and it's like i can understand from like a lizard brain perspective why that's making you happy in the moment but i don't think this is actually what's good for you in the long term well of course yeah no that's true i went to so i got quite sick in university and i dropped out of university and moved back home and decided to become a makeup artist when i was 20. And Smart. my dad almost had a heart attack. <laughs> he was like, you're not going to be intellectually stimulated. What are you doing with your life? And I was like, and then mom was like, do what your heart wants. <laughs> and, and I went to makeup school for about six months and just died of boredom there. And I have disaster. nothing against, I mean, I, I learned some makeup tricks and I use makeup all the time. So it's not like it was a waste of time. But It was a waste uh, of time. There's definitely something to be said, especially when you're young not necessarily just doing what you think makes you happy. Like ideally you do what makes you happy in the long run, but it's really hard to figure out what actually makes you happy, right? And it's probably not those fleeting 
things that you appreciate when you're probably under like 23, at least for me, I think my brain fully grew in when I was 23 or 24. Like it took a while. Yeah. And I feel like when we're younger as well, we, we think of like happiness just in terms of just like pleasure, what's pleasurable for me in the moment. Whereas I feel when we get older, we start to look for things that are actually more meaningful and that give us fulfillment which is a different kind of happiness, but sometimes it's the type of fulfillment that actually yeah. requires some short-term unpleasantness, Sacrifice, yeah. whether that's working really hard. Exactly. It Actually, that is that is my opinion what life is about, right? Is how much am I willing to sacrifice in the short term for long-term gain, right? So you have to sacrifice your time, your, your life, your you know, your freedom, you have to sacrifice a lot in order to get the ultimate goal, which is long term success and stability, effectively. Hard to set up a business so that you can have something that, you know, you do love doing that's also financially viable. Or, you know, even with a family, sometimes that can be really hard work getting set up and, you know, worrying about things like buying a house and stuff like that, but it's for the longer term goal. Right. And exactly. that's just something when you're younger, you probably, you might think is is not worthwhile, but it's like a, your brain is very different when you're younger. You're not geared toward long-term consequences. So that's right. Uh, if, if young people are watching this, I guess my advice would be like, be aware that the choices you make now may not be the ones you would make in the future, which I know if you're young is really hard to hear. I would not have appreciated being told that, but it's true. Yeah, it, it yeah, is, it, it is, is true. true. Of course, right? Like, just because in the moment today you'd make this choice doesn't mean that it's the best choice for the long term, which is why you have to balance strategic planning with, um, you know, short-term fun, effectively. That's one of the big things that life is about. We, we already know this. So anyone also with think, half a brain you know, knows what this. does she know? And I, I know myself well enough. Yes. But maybe some of that could be mitigated by doing more long-term planning. Like what are the long-term goals you want? And then work towards those. Don't work towards these short-term goals as much because I think that's probably where the like hedonistic stuff comes in. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Like I, I don't think you're going to be... You know, what, how, how do I want to look as a 50 year old? I don't think OnlyFans necessarily comes into play there. Indeed. Right. Yeah. So, um, Accurate. okay. You talked about the red pill community. What are your, I, I switched directions on the red pill community. So I don't think I knew very much about it. I just heard of it and I've been thinking, you know, I think they've got some points and I think because of this war on masculinity, the red pill community is warranted because they're supportive of men. I didn't actually realize how much hatred of women was involved in the red pill ah, community until I started doing a little bit more digging. But right. uh, wh- Yes, it must be hatred of girls. How, how about it's positive towards guys without being hateful of, of girls? How about that? How about we, you know, dispense with that? idea but you know whatever let's just uh slap men as as hard as we can because we can (laughs) like crazy absolutely crazy because we can okay what what are your thoughts on people like fat uh fit and fresh and that kind of group of people you think it's useful or So I'm not, I've heard about Fit and Fresh. I've never watched any of their podcasts. I think I've seen like clips of them, but I mean, just like my impression of the red pill community as a whole, I think there are some very valid criticisms out there from the red pill community of things like feminism, of things like the court system and the way that it is weighted against men. Right. But the more that I look into the red pill community, it's kind of ironic because, you know, the the whole red pill analogy, it comes from the matrix and taking the red pill is supposed to symbolize seeing the world as it really is. But there's a lot of narratives that are being pushed in the red pill community that are just not representative of the world as it. Yeah, exactly. Don't believe uh, what they're preaching. Believe what I believe because that's correct. Yeah, okay. You know, bull crap is everywhere, guys. That's all I have to say about that. It really is. It's. I feel like in some cases they've almost gone too far the opposite way, believing that, you know, um, 
I, I, I saw someone online posting that like 80% of divorces are initiated by women and it's even worse for college educated women. It's 90% of uh, divorces, like therefore like don't marry someone who, like don't marry a woman who's gone to college. She's like 90% okay. chance she's gonna leave you. And it's like, actually- That doesn't mean there's a 90% chance she's gonna leave you. It actually means that in the case of divorce, she's more likely to to be the one to initiate that's what they're saying it's it's uh she's actually misconstruing the um, the actual um she's misconstruing the actual argument college educated women are much less likely to get They're divorced than to women divorce. who've only gone to high school. There's a the difference between saying that 90% of college educated women who are married get divorced versus of divorces that happen with college educated women, 90% of them are initiated. Like that's a different thing. And right. there's also research going into why divorces are initiated in the first place. And one of the top reasons is infidelity. I, I think it's, pretty hard to argue that the person who cheated is not the one who is responsible for ending the marriage rather than the one who simply submitted the paperwork for it like if we're actually talking about who tore up the relationship here so yes but who is who is it easier like for who is it easier to engage in infidelity men or women they're implying she's implying by what she's saying that men are more likely to do to to do infidelity right but actually women are because women have more opportunity than men at every age so it's utterly ridiculous there's like a lot of stuff like that that i feel like there's very cursory research being done uh, and people are kind of choosing statistics to fit their narrative which we see all the time in this day and age it's not specific to the red pill community but um like yeah i, I you know i appreciate the the attempt to push back against a lot of the toxic behaviors that we see but there's also you know i've seen also i think from fresh and fit the you know, we can condemn uh female promiscuity but they almost defend male promiscuity which is like okay yeah. well that's that's very strange and like if you you i often hear feminists being called hypocrites i don't know how you can have that position without it also being very very hypocritical i feel like that's new now, I'm not that familiar with red pill stuff, but from what I'd seen in like 2012 ish, I don't I didn't remember. I think it was like that in 2012 either. Yeah, like that seems to be something that's like since 2020, where it was, oh, men are supposed to be promiscuous and have multiple women, but women are always attached to one alpha male. That yeah. seems to have popped up in the last like three years. I don't even know how that started. Probably Tate. Tate is the one that I, I believe came up with this uh, first. But anyway, um, regardless, like the the idea behind it is um, multiple girls are attracted to the same guy. It's basically how Tinder works. That's where it comes from. Okay, um, let's continue. Started. Because Cassie J, like, she did a movie called The Red Pill, and it was basically just about um, men's rights issues, which I think are very important and kind of criticizing a lot of the more radical parts of modern-day feminism, which, again, like, I think if that's all it was, I, I'm on board with that. And I think there are some people in the Red Pill community who still speak on that, and that's great. But there's also, like, very weird narratives that they've started inserting surrounding relationships which is where i'm like i don't know yeah and the reason they're inserting those is because they're trying to turn the tide and have girls not be the the rulers of relationships because they do a bad job at it right but of course girls would not agree with that and find it quote unquote weird which is what she's saying it is even though it's actually not but anyway it's not weird <laughs> anyway where you're getting this where they're basically telling men not to be in relationships with women at all and it's like you sound like a rad femme like you sound exactly like a rad femme right now um and it's funny because i've seen so many feminists say that marriage and children are a patriarchal invention and i've also seen red pillars say that marriage and children are a matriarchal invention and it's only women who are trying to trap you and it's like what men want to get married and have kids too like that can make a man happy Right, like, uh, the, 
basically the well actually what uh, what real rp actually says is the only reason you should want to get married is if you're looking for uh marriage and children otherwise marriage is useless that's that's the the rp stance so these girls are talking about something they don't they don't actually know as though they're an authority on it you know normal normal garbage that happens in uh 2023 people pretending to be experts and not knowing crap basically big surprise big surprise there and obviously i'm being facetious here all right let's continue as well it's not like i it's just very strange i think a lot of the people in those communities just need to go outside and touch grass and speak to someone of the opposite sex who is not online frankly (laughs) I'm glad you Yeah, so this girl is uh that's called an ad hominem attack. So she's just attacking their character, you know. Oh, you guys are losers that live in your mom's basement. You don't know anything about anything, you know, like like obviously it's bullshit. Obviously it's rude and disrespectful to men to say that. Obviously, um, you know, there's something wrong with you for saying something like that, but nobody's gonna call you on it, so but there it is. It's very disrespectful for her to say that. And nobody's going to call that out. All right. Let's end the video there. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. Draw me a donation like Hunter M, Adrian Alton, and Bobby Dylan, and recently Renaissance Press. Thank you. Buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios Books. Go join my Patreon at patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Looking for coaching? Message me at theheliosblog at gmail.com. I'll slot you right in. Thank you so much for listening, guys, especially if you listen to the end. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.